Is your editing system too slow to work with 4K footage? Have issues with drop frames? Need to edit on a laptop while traveling? The solution to each of these issues may be to change your codec. If you're wondering how you can make your footage easier to edit without sacrificing the quality of the final product, we have answers. In this video, we'll explain the three basic options for preparing your footage for the editing process. We'll also teach you the best use cases for each option so you can pick the right one for your needs. Haley here from VideoMaker. There are time codes below if you wanna know what we're covering or wanna to jump to any place in the video. Do you wanna edit faster? If so, we have a list of the top 10 keyboard shortcuts you need to know. To get it, click on this card or on the link in the description. Without getting lost in the details, a codec is a set of instructions that determines how video information is encoded to reduce file size and is then later decoded when played back. There are dozens of codecs in use today, but a few of the most common examples include H.264, Apple ProRes, DNxHD, and MKV. Each codec is designed for different purposes and offers different advantages and disadvantages. However, for our purposes, let's focus on the difference between interframe codecs and intraframe codecs. We'll start with H.264, since this is likely the most familiar. H.264 is an interframe codec. That means most frames in the sequence must borrow information from other keyframes to properly display an image. On the other hand, we have intraframe codecs like Apple ProRes and DNxHD. With these codecs, each frame contains all the information it needs to render the image without having to reference any other frame. In the context of video editing, interframe codecs put more strain on your editing system as it tries to gather all the information needed to render each frame as you are editing. Intraframe codecs generally offer a smoother editing experience since each frame is self-contained and thus easier to display. Now that we know a bit more about codecs, we can take a more informed look at the files we get from our cameras. You might think that using the media that comes directly out of your camera would always be the best option, but this is not always the case. Many cameras today record in H.264, though some are now moving to H.265. Both of these are good for producing small file sizes without losing much quality, but as we just learned, these inner frame codecs can drag down our system's performance. Professional level cameras sometimes have the option to choose intraframe codecs such as Apple ProRes or DNxHD. You can also use external recorders to access additional codec options. As we now know, those pro level intraframe codecs will be better suited to editing. Raw recording is another option featured in some cameras, especially high end cinema cameras. An uncompressed raw file contains the data collected directly from your camera's image sensor which means these files are huge. However, you are more likely to encounter compressed raw files, which take that raw sensor data and compress it into a more manageable file size. It will still be pretty big though, in most cases. Some common raw formats include Cinema DNG, Red Code Raw, ProRes Raw, Blackmagic Raw, and Canon Cinema Raw Lite. So when should you use native files? When they work with your editing system. If you aren't experiencing issues with your current media, there is really no reason to change it. Conveniently, Adobe Premiere Pro supports most modern media formats, including raw video formats. However, it's always good to know your options since transcoding might help resolve any hiccups in your current workflow. If your footage is in an interframe codec, you could likely benefit from transcoding your footage prior to editing. You may also choose to transcode if your video resolution or bitrate is too much for your system to handle. Maybe you got a new 4K camera, but haven't upgraded your editing machine. Or maybe you're on a business trip and want to get some editing done in your downtime. In any of these scenarios, you could benefit from transcoding your footage. Once you decide to transcode your footage, you'll also need to think about how that will impact your final deliverables. Using transcoded footage for your final export will be fine in some situations, like uploading to social media. In this case, you would use an intermediate codec to complete the edit. However, 
When you need the final product to be in the highest quality possible, you'll want to swap out your transcoded footage for the original files before exporting your final cut. In that case, you would be using a proxy workflow. Whether you transcode, create proxies, or neither, do keep an unaltered copy stored somewhere safe. That way, you will always have access to the clip in its original format, bit rate, and resolution if you ended up needing it. Transcoding is the process of converting video from one format to another. In this case, we're talking about converting the camera's native format into an intermediate codec we can use for editing. This is sometimes necessary. For example, if your editing software doesn't support your camera's native file format. However, you can also use transcoding to convert a resource-hungry format like H.264 into a friendlier format like ProRes without losing quality or resolution. Finally, you may also choose to transcode footage when you want to unify footage from several different sources into a single file format. There are a few different ways to transcode media, but one of the easiest ways is to use the tools built into Premiere Pro. Once you open your project in Premiere Pro, head to the Media Browser panel and make sure the Ingest option near the top of the window is checked. Then click on the wrench next to the Ingest option to choose your transcoding settings. Under Ingest Settings, select the Transcode option from the first drop-down menu, then choose a preset. A popular option is Apple ProRes 422. You can also choose the folder you want to use to store your newly transcoded media. Once you're happy with your Ingest Settings and the Ingest option is checked in the Media Browser, you can select the files you want to use and import them as normal. In the background, Media Encoder will start to make transcoded versions of each file, and Premiere Pro will automatically swap out the original files with these transcoded files as they become available. Since transcoding does take time, you may want to test your transcode settings on a single short clip to make sure you have them right. That way, you'll know what to expect when you transcode a larger batch. Proxy files are low-resolution versions of the original files. Because these files are so small, they can be more easily edited on less powerful computer systems. If your system is frequently bogged down by high-resolution footage, try exporting proxy files and working with those instead. However, proxy files are not pretty to look at. Their only purpose is to lighten the load for your editing machine, so they will only be used during the editing process. That means that you'll need to replace those proxies with the original high-resolution media before you export your final video. Making proxy files for your project is similar to transcoding, but the workflow differs in that those proxy files will be replaced with the original media before export. Premiere Pro offers tools to manage this specific workflow. To see how this works, we'll begin again in the media browser within Premiere Pro and make sure the ingest option is checked. Then click on the wrench to access the ingest settings. This time we'll choose create proxies. We'll then choose your proxy format and the proxy destination. Hit OK and then import the files you'd like to use in your project. Once your proxies are ready to go, you can add your media to the timeline. Using the toggle proxy option in Premiere Pro, you can easily switch between proxy and full res files as you work on your project. That way you can toggle proxies on as you are editing and then easily relink the original files when you're ready to export. Not every project requires transcoding or proxies, but it's important to consider whether or not either process could improve your editing workflow. Transcoding and making proxies may add extra time to your workflow at the beginning, but taking advantage of these options can actually speed up the editing process in the long run. Fewer dropped frames mean more creativity and a better editing experience overall. In the end, Figuring out the best video format for your editing workflow will make you a better video editor. Remember, if you'd like to get our list of the top 10 keyboard shortcuts you need to know, click on this card or the link in the description. If you've made it this far, consider subscribing and liking this video. In the next video, we'll cover how to edit videos fast by doing pre-editing tasks. Thanks for watching.